Hey everybody, welcome back to Minor Stuff. I'm Matt. I'm Pat. And we're, we're the, the Minor, Minor Brothers. Brothers. Today we're doing our top five bottom shelf bourbons again. Because, you know, he messed up the first one. Let's get into it. What? All right, welcome back, everybody. Before we get started with our uh, top five bottom shelf bourbons, um, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, drop some comments down below what your five favorite bourbons are that you find on the bottom shelf. Uh, and go check us out over on that Patreon thing over there. We got some stuff going on. And we're doing cool things like giving all of our current Patreons a bunch of samples as like a little Christmas gift saying thank you for joining our channel over there. So go on ahead, take a look at us over there. We're doing some really cool stuff. Um, and then Matt, why don't you uh, lead us off with this one and try not to screw it up again. All right, so we're going over our top five bottom shelf bourbons. And these are all gonna be basically $25 or less. Uh, so we reached out to our Patreon members, find out what there is on their list of bottom shelf bourbons to help add to our list of bottom shelf bourbons. All right, Pat, are we ready to do this? I, I don't know if you can use words today, man. You're struggling so hard. <laughs> old Forester, you can't talk bottom shelf bourbons without good old Old Forester 100. This thing is just a great bottle. Something um, you roll through quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's delicious, so it does seem to get used a lot. Uh, I just bought three more bottles just because, I mean, you always need a backup to a backup to a backup. You never know when you're going to have to do it. If I'm doing a party or something... I, I don't think you have any bourbon here that you, you, you should probably have a couple extra bottles. Everything has its spot, and everything has its place. So, for example, I'm doing a party. I need to have multiple different things for somebody to drink. And you know what? This is a great thing to have as a mixer. It's a great thing to have if you're going to drink neat. It's a great thing to have on the rocks. No matter what, this is a great thing. And you know what's great about right now, Patrick? The cool sample that comes with it is the Christmas package thingy. Christmas package. Buy this. No extra cost. You get this for free. Yep. 100%. That's the reason just to go buy it. And because that's one of the reasons I did. Old-fashioned mix. And you like it. It's awesome. If you don't like it, then throw it away. You still have a great bottle of bourbon at the same freaking price. And I will say, we have not tried this um, this one yet. No. Nope. This is going to be for our next old-fashioned Why didn't you do that line. for this video, then? You should have made a freaking old-fashioned with it, so you could have said if it was good or not. I wanted to wait till we do the blind, so it's like fresh. Like You'll remember that anyways. Anyways, so that was bottle number one. Bottle number two, Pat. My first bottle. Good old Four Roses. Now, she's coming in a little light at only 80 proof. So there's the, you know, it's going to be That's good to the get. the one downside. The one downside, yes. It's going to be great for getting people that don't like the higher proof stuff into it. Give them something good. Um, you know, you're going to lose, you mix this with anything, you're going to lose... Pretty much all of the proof. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the proof. Um, not that there's much to start with. No. The other good thing about this one, it's not super oaky, so it's more of those like fruity floral notes as opposed to your vanilla, caramel, oaky, traditional, traditional stuff. stuff. Um, so it just gives you a different flavor, which is, is very nice. I, I like it, although it does have quite a bit of spice to it, so if you don't like the spice, it might turn you off. Um, but overall, I mean, $20 for a whole bottle, it, you can't go wrong. We can't talk traditional bourbon, Pat, without the turkey. True story. This is, this is a must. So I would say the stuff that I have is going to be higher proof, higher spice. Yeah. Perfectly. You, stuff you have will be a little bit sweeter, lower proofs. And I, I say that for a reason. If you're trying to get somebody into bourbon brand new, you don't want to waste a lot of money. You're not going to try have them try a hundred dollar bottle or something. You did, but for most people, you're not going to want them to try a hundred dollar bottle. So you give them something lower proof, something that's a little bit more cost efficient, especially if they're going to go out and buy it. Um, but for me, this is one that always everybody has started with, and they're like, "Hey, you got to you got to drink Wild Turkey 101. You got to try it." And at first, it was too spicy for me. It wasn't. It was just it's a high rise, so it is going to be spicier. And I, at the time, was a lot more into the Buffalo Trace and, and that other type of stuff. And But now, I've grown to just absolutely love 
Yeah. Wild Turkey 101. This is just it's it's a it's classic. Gonna, it's going to be on everybody's bar cart, period. Every bar needs to have a Wild Turkey 101 because it is a mainstay. This is your classic bourbon notes. It is going to be spicier, but you're going to get really good oak, really good caramel out of it. A little bit of hints of vanilla and stuff, but I would say more or less that caramel oakiness like really carries through and that, that rye spice uh, is definitely there. But this one is a great, great bottle. All right, and now a bottle that makes that one, in my opinion, less a greater bottle, Buffalo Trace. So, and for all the people saying it's allocated, blah, 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 we just went to a place today that had four cases just stocked sitting there right on just the floor. sitting on the floor. I was like, crap my pants almost. I, right? And, it, and it, it's, you know, it wasn't like they're sitting there because it's running at some stupid price either. I mean, it was a little bit above retail, but it still wasn't, it was still reasonable. And I was going to say, you're going to find some of these at 26. The majority that we find are 33. Yeah. And the highest I've seen these out is like 39. Yeah. Um, which I wouldn't pay 39 for this. Uh, the 26 to 30 is like my... Yo, yeah. If I see it 26 to 30, I'm buying. But this this is what got me into bourbon. Um, it's very, very smooth. Good traditional flavor to it. And uh, it's a little bit sweeter, which is what I like. You don't have as much... There's no real no spice. Yeah. Um, I find to it. So I personally love this one. I think it's a great mixer. Um, coming in only at, hanging at that 90 level is uh, is perfect, proof-wise. You get a little um, bit of like cherryness in it, too. Like this, yep. our Everyday Drinker um, series that we did, yep. where we each picked a bottle and blinded it, um, this one, one for both of us. Yep. And I'd say it's because it's one of the best choices out there. It is. People call you a tater or whatever. It's good bourbon. Yep. It's delicious bourbon. Yep. 100%. All right, so this next one, Pat, before I pull it out, we were going back and forth because there's so many good that you could throw into a top five. Even with our patrons, they even gave us some other good ideas. Yep. Cooper's Craft 100, which we don't, we don't even care. have up here. Yep. Um, and, you know, some other good, there were some other good bottles in there too, but it's like Evan Williams White Label was one that a lot of people pick. Yep. 1783, um, good choices. Old Tub, for me. Yeah, I would say that's another it's one that's a one throw of your in new there. favorites. It really is. It's become one of my more daily sippers because it is just, it's great. You know, bottled and bond, 100 proof. Like, you can't go wrong with a lot of those types of things. But this one comes in a little bit higher proof. A little bit spicier, but I think it's worth it. Old Granddad, 114. You could have gone with the bottled and bond, but we can't get bottled and bond up here. Nope. Uh, in we fact, can we can only get this at two different stores. And because it's a bottom shelfer and it was literally on the bottom shelf, I passed over the very first time I went to one of the stores. I passed over like the four times you and went then, to the stores. And then, no, I found it the second time. I just didn't end up buying it because I was I wanted to verify a good price first. And uh, then I ended up buying it. You didn't say you found it because you were considering buying it online. Yeah, I know. It's, it's the price because the, the place that we go to marks up everything. Yeah. That's true. And and I hate that. That is one of the things that I think is the stupidest thing in the entire world. Yep. It's you don't need to take a bottle that you're already making money on. At MSRP at twenty six ninety nine, you're already making money. To to then try to sell that bottle for forty, that is just unreasonable. So they the the thing about the store is they have a lot of stuff. You know, you want to buy a birthday bourbon, a Coy Hill, a Pappy, it's all sitting there in his little museum. However, you know, mm. the, there's other bottles like Old Forester. I found one of the older 1920s uh, yeah. at retail. You know what I mean? Um, this one ended up being at retail. So once you start finding these at retail, they're great. You know, I figured out why the other ones cost so much, all the pappies and everything that he's got back there. It's because he has to pay somebody to come in and dust the bottles off every month because they I wouldn't be surprised. So long. Just to keep them looking pretty. Yeah. Um, but so this is a great bottle. It's hard to get up here. But it's got it's at 114 proof. It's a good it's a good neat drink. Yep. Or on the rocks. Um, but it's a great mixer too because you're not losing a lot of proof when you mix because it's already starting at 114. So then when when you knock it down a little bit, you're still getting some some oomph behind your drink. Oh, yeah. It's got your good classic flavors. You know your your oak, your vanilla, your caramels and stuff. And you you are getting a little bit more of the spice and everything else behind this one. And I think that's why this one rounds out. And sort of makes the, the Evan Williams bottle and bottle, those other ones sort of bow out to be this one in the top five. Yeah, great, great, great proof for mixing. Absolutely. And you're not going to go wrong. 
So that's our list of our top five. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think um, is your list of your top five bottom shelf bourbons. And uh, thanks for following us along, everybody. Have a good day.